This is the Darlington Raceway in Darlington, South Carolina, the world's first super speedway built in 1950. Hi, I'm Bill Fleming, welcoming you to the Darlington Raceway. This is another stop on our coverage of the super speedways of America. Earlier in the year, you saw the Daytona 500, which was won by Cale Yarborough. He came back to win at Atlanta. He hopes to make it three today in a row on the super speedways. However, sitting on the pole is his old adversary, Leroy Yarborough. And we'll be talking about him in just a moment. I would like to mention to you that also today you'll be seeing the conclusion of the World's Pocket Billiards Championship. A little bit earlier, you saw Irving the Deacon Crane sink that shot that put that match between himself and Luther Lasseter into a playoff. And you'll be seeing that very shortly. Right now, I'd like to call in Freddie Lorenzen, who in five times here at Darlington sat on the pole. Now, there's one unusual feature, Fred, that when you sat on the pole, you had the inside pole, but Leroy has chosen the outside. Now, why today? Well, Bill, uh, I guess Leroy thinks that uh, the groove going the first turn is high. I always chose uh, to sit on the inside because I felt that when I earned the pole, that's where I wanted to sit on the inside. And here, going into the first turn, uh, I was always scared of getting in that loose stuff and getting in the fence. So some drivers, Fireball used to always choose the outside. I always chose the inside. In other words, this track really makes you think, doesn't it? It does very much. There's really only uh, one place to pass here, and that's on the front stretch. Both turns are almost single file. So it should provide plenty of activity here today. Huh? It really will, Bill, with the speeds they are here. All right. Also, we've got a couple of interesting uh, features. We've got some new equipment. And uh, Fred, let's take a look at it and have you comment about it. Bill, the newest thing that people are talking about on Pit Road is the new twin carburetors just allowed by NASCAR on the Hemminghead Chrysler engine for the first time. It was approved about a month ago, and it'll be the first super speedway race that they'll be used on, and it'll be interesting to see how they run. Here's a new tire just designed for this race. Look at how wide it is, how slick, very few air holes. It looks almost like a drag tire. There, an inner liner is being put in, which is a safety precaution in case the outer liner blows. A cool suit, which is worn by the drivers, uh, recently brought out a couple of years ago. Uh, ice water's pumped through it, and during the race, the drivers kept quite cool with it. And this will be worn, incidentally, by Paul Goldsmith today. Leroy Yarbrough is the fastest qualifier. He's on the pole today at 148.850. Here's Bobby Allison of Hueytown, Alabama, driving a new Ford Torino today, car number 29. The veteran Daryl Derringer in a 68 Plymouth Roadrunner. David Pearson, driving a new Ford Torino with the smaller 396 engine, and Cale Yarborough in a new 68 Mercury Cyclone. And Richard Petty, last year's Rebel 400 winner. Right now, things are kind of quiet in Pitt Row. This is the famous Wood Brothers crew, and it gives us a chance to talk to Dick Hutcherson, crew chief of David Pearson. Well, Dick, as a former driver yourself, perhaps you are better qualified as a pit crew chief than anybody else, simply because you can interpret what that driver, in this case, David Pearson, really wants in that car. He knows how the car is handling, and you can interpret it better than anybody else. Would you say that's right? Well, Bill, um, David and I just run enough races now where I think that I can um, just about answer his questions before he asks it. And I know um, by being a driver before what he wants to know and what he needs to know according to win, to win the race, you know. And the pit stops is real important. I mean, that can win or lose a race. You can make up 10 seconds in the pits a lot easier than you can make it up on the racetrack. I would think, too, that uh, tracks vary uh, as far as pit stops are concerned. Now, here you have a narrow uh, track at Darlington, which means uh, maybe a lot of fender bumping, uh, a lot of metal that's got to be pulled away from tires. So uh, it's kind of a specialty here, isn't it? That's right, Bill. And um, everything's worked out pretty good for us this year. We've had some real fast pit stops all the way from down to 18 seconds. and. Um, so far, David's been the only car here that hasn't hit the wall yet. And, of course, I know he will before the race is over, but I think we've got as good a chance of winning as anybody here. One thing is for sure, with this color in the pit, David isn't likely to overrun it. He will never miss us, will he? <laughs> <laughs> and now as the cars get set to move out, let's set the field. Leroy Yarbrough on the outside of row one. He is the fastest qualifier, has chosen that outside spot. On the inside is David Pearson in car number 17. Then moving back to two is Daryl Derringer and Bobby Allison. Then Donnie Allison and Buddy Baker in row three. Tiny Lund and Kirk Turner in row four. Gail Yarborough and Charlie Glotzbach in row five. Richard Betty and Bobby Isaac in row six. James Hilton and John Sears in row seven. Row eight, Elmo Langley and Paul Goldsmith. Bud Moore and Bill Champion in row nine. And row 10, James Thomas and E.J. Trivet. Now as they come around, getting into position for the start, and here they come. The green flag is out. Fred, it looks like it's going to be a race to the first turn. It sure is, Bill, and we're going to see which was the wisest, uh, Pearson or Leroy. And it looks lead. like Pearson. 
Pearson hangs on to the inside, and Leroy goes just a little bit high as they head to the back stretch. It's Pearson around that first turn, around number two, and into the back stretch in the number one spot. So, Fred, I guess that seems to be the charm spot at least today. I guess so, and I think Dave is probably happy he chose it. There you see how they have to go single file as they go into these turns. There isn't too much room to pass on this race course. As they come around for the first time out of the number four turn, coming close to the wall up there, and at the end of the first lap, officially, it's David Pearson in first place, Leroy Yarbrough, then Bobby Allison, Daryl Derringer, Buddy Baker, Tiny Lund, Donnie Allison, that's Cale Yarbrough back in about eighth spot, and he's followed by Richard Petty. And this must really be a thrill for him to come down that chute and then come into just a little tiny one-lane curve. Well, every all your passing has really got to be done on that front stretch, Bill. It's about the only place in the racetrack. Look at how close they're running. There's Bobby Allison on the inside, right next to Leroy Yarbrough. Now, can he get him? Uh, he's gonna. He should have really made his move in the front. It's awful hard in the back. I doubt it, Bill. Yep, there goes Leroy, just a little bit ahead as Bobby has to back off, going into single file into that turn. So it's David Pearson in car number 17, and there's a car blowing. That is car number 88, entered by Serge Adams, and I believe Neil Castle's in it. Uh, Brad. Yes, the idiot is. Uh, Bill, he had trouble with his own car and blew an engine the last day of practice, so he took over this car, which is also owned by Neil. All right, that means one car out of the race right now, but still no caution flag, and that's fortunate with a blown engine. Here's a pretty good battle between Tiny Lund and Richard Petty. They like to go at each other a little bit, and a little smoke coming out of Tiny Lund's car. So we'll keep our eyes on that. And a spin up here. Car number 52, Lenny Waldo from Cleveland, Ohio. Around he goes, still no caution flag. And that is very fortunate. At this stage of the race, two cars already up. David Pearson hanging on to the number one spot, followed by Leroy Yarbrough and Bobby Allison. We'll be back with more of the Rebel 400 in just a moment. First 10 laps, 143.063 miles per hour, and believe me, here at the Darlington Raceway, that is really moving, Fred. It sure is, Bill. Uh, it's almost as fast as the fastest uh, qualifying lap was a year ago here, and I surely look for a new record at the end of 100 miles. And a lot of good personal duels going on. Uh, this is for 11th and 12th place between uh, Goldsmith and Bud Moore. They've been dicing it back and forth, and there are about eight cars up there within 50 yards of the leader. Leader David Pearson has won four races this year so far, but has not won at Darlington in his entire career. Matter of fact, David has not won in a super speedway since 1961, so he's had a long drought. In second place is Leroy Yarbrough, and uh, Bobby Allison is running third. Buddy Baker, Donnie Allison, there's Tiny Lund. And a spin up here, it is Bobby Allison. Bobby Allison throwing metal off the car, spun around, the right front is wobbly, and uh, Fred, I don't know what happened, but he definitely is uh, in trouble. Uh, himself and Buddy Baker were running quite closely together through turn two, and then I lost sight of him, and then I saw him spinning. His right front tire was flat, so we'll just find out when he pits. And he's there right now with his pit crew swarming all over the car, and they're gonna take the right rear off, and boy, that tire is hot, Fred. <laughs> Look at that crewman down there, and they're bending out the metal. So apparently he was rubbing against the tire, but he's off and on his way, losing about a lap and a half in the process. So we have David Pearson, Leroy Avro, and Bobby giving up his place to Buddy Baker, and Donnie Allison is running in the number four spot, those four cars right together, and then Cale Yarbrough is right behind them. Quite a race here in the opening stages at this sleepy little community in Darlington, South Carolina, and there is Leroy Yarbrough and Buddy Baker both going by David Pearson. Whether he backed off intentionally, we don't know, but both Leroy and Buddy Baker went by him, and now Pearson has dropped back to fourth or fifth spot as both cars, uh, Donnie Allison and Cale Yarbrough, go by him. Oh, oh, wait a minute, did you see that? Cale Yarbrough hit the wall. He sure did. He's been trying to move up high into that groove, so he just catapulted down that straightaway. It gives him the momentum to run faster down the chute, and he just got a little bit too high. Whew. An anxious moment for the Cale Yarbrough fans. He's apparently all right. We're going to keep our eye on the car. 
but it seems to be uh, right up there with uh, the others as far as speed is concerned with Leroy in first place Buddy Baker then Donnie Allison and Cale Yarborough the first four cars right now David Pearson running back in the number five spot and look at this I might add Bill uh, Buddy Baker has really moved up here and he's really putting the pressure on Leroy I thought he was going to get him there for just a moment uh, the official report on Bobby Allison is that he had contact with Buddy Baker and spun but he's still in the race and Buddy Baker putting the heat on Leroy Yarbrough so it promises to be a hectic afternoon here in Darlington, South Carolina. We'll be back with more of the Rebel 400 in just a moment. The amazing feature about the Rebel 400 so far is we have not had one caution flag. And that is all the more surprising when you realize the extreme speeds that these drivers are running, Fred. I think, Bill, that it's because the drivers are being a little bit more careful because of the extreme speeds. As the speeds have gone up, they've become a little bit more cautious. How about a bad idea? Now let's set the field for you as Leroy Yarbrough is getting a strong challenge from Buddy Baker. Buddy Baker right on the heels of him, and now Buddy takes the lead right in the number one turn. Going into the first turn, which is the best and the safest spot to take the lead, is where he took it, Bill. Right now, we're going to take a short break from the Rebel 400 here in Darlington. We'll be back with more of the race very shortly. Time now to go from the highest point in Darlington, South Carolina, our Pagoda Control Tower, to the world's tallest building in New York City and Bud Pump. Thank you, Bud. Bill Fleming, along with Fred Lorenzen, back at the Rebel 400. When we left you a short time ago, Buddy Baker was leading the race. He's still in the lead, and here he comes down the straightaway in that Dodge Charger, that white number three car and in second place is another Dodge Charger car number six driven by Charlie Glotzbach and here he comes followed closely by Cale Yarborough and that's kind of a surprising thing uh, Fred these two Chargers right up there one and two yes it is uh, Bill I think one big thing that has to do with it is Buddy Baker has done an awful lot of tire test work here uh, last winter and this spring this is one of the tracks that he uh, started to run on years ago. His father taught him here, and I think he runs well here, better than almost anywhere. And he's in for a routine pit stop right now. And here comes Charlie Glotz back also in, so the lead cars are out for the uh, pit stops, and that moves Cale Yarborough in the lead. There's Buddy Baker trying to take a drink out of that little uh, water that they carry on board with a straw, and there wasn't enough coming out, so he got some water and poured it on him. Do it the old-fashioned way. Right now, Cale Yarbrough is in the lead. Cale won both at Daytona and Atlanta. Earlier in the year, he's trying for his third straight day, and earlier we had an opportunity to talk to him. Cale, how would you compare Darlington with the other two speedways that you won this year? You won at Daytona and at Atlanta. Well, this racetrack is uh, altogether different from uh, any racetrack in the country. Uh, this racetrack is a one-groove racetrack. It's the hardest racetrack to pass on, and... Uh, it was it's just almost outdated for the speeds that we're running uh it's uh, kind of like indianapolis uh it's just almost a follow the leader track uh the turns uh, have only one groove and uh they, it's just hard to pass anybody here that uh, it's, it makes for a real fine show but it is hard on equipment and hard on man and here comes Yarborough around the track now into the number four turn and he hits the wall up on the number four turn that's the second time today that he's hit that wall and Fred, he's coming right into the apron area. Look he, at the side of that car. He hit it awful hard, Bill. He slid almost from the bottom uh, to the top. And boy, this almost will put him out of the race. And now the Wood Brothers crew actually awaiting his approach. This will be more than a routine stop. But earlier, Glenn Wood told us what happens on a pit stop. Well, I usually stop the car, and Leonard changes the front tire and wrap it with the back with the air guns and Delano, other brother, used the jack and uh, Clay, another brother, is helped with the back wheel. I, in turn, go to the front and help Leonard with that, providing I don't have to go under the hood for anything and uh, Kenneth Martin puts the gas in. So then if anybody gets done a little ahead and there's something yet to do, uh, which one gets done first, does it. And there was plenty to do on that pit stop. Back for more of the Rebel 400 in just a moment. And here's the leader right now coming around. It's Buddy Baker in car number three. And we've got a great battle going on for second place between Leroy Yarbrough and Charlie Glotzbach. There they are, practically bumper to bumper. This is the 
battle for second. And then behind them comes David Pearson, then Richard Petty, and let's see, it's Daryl Derringer. So it's been uh, quite an afternoon, we might mention for Yarborough fans, that Kale is still in the race despite hitting the wall twice so far today. His crew doing a great job of keeping him running. He has had quite a day here, uh, Bill. He's had quite a problem with the wall. I just don't know why, but it must have knocked his steering out by now because he isn't running as fast as he was. Yeah, that was Charlie Glotzbach going by Leroy Yarbrough. That puts Charlie into second place. Everybody's been impressed with uh, Charlie's racing this year. He was particularly impressive at Atlanta several weeks ago. There's the leader, and Charlie Glotzbach is taking aim on him now. Buddy Baker in car number three. So we have those two Dodge Chargers still running one and two at this point with Leroy Yarbrough dropping back into third place. Here's David Pearson, the leader of the first 18 laps, and then he backed off, followed by Richard Petty. That's the battle for fourth and fifth. And we'll remind you again that Pearson is running that light Ford engine, that 396, and oh, here is Cale Yarbrough again, up into the guardrail and down to the infield, and the caution light is out. For the first time this afternoon, the caution light has gone on, and the cars will be slowing down, and that is the third mishap for Yarborough. He makes it around into the pits. I wonder, how can he keep going? <laughs> it sure is rough on a driver when he does spin, and also the car, uh, when you hit that fence, it's hard on the driver's arms and also the steering, and I'm sure it's hard on Kale. Now the other cars taking the opportunity under the caution flag to come in for the pit stops. The Wood Brothers have been busy today on Cale Yarborough's car. It's really miraculous that the thing can keep running after being up against the wall on three separate occasions. There goes David Pearson out. Cale is back out. Paul Goldsmith still in the running. Derringer back out, Glotzbach is out, and uh, he gets out before Baker, so that means that uh, Charlie Glotzbach will be in the lead right now. And as the cars move out here, we ought to get a comment from Freddie Lorenz on the fact that we've got 106 laps before the caution flag. That's over a third of the race, Bill, and it's very unusual for this racetrack due to the uh, big turns and the short straightaways. There's usually an awful lot of cautions here. Well, fortunately, that wasn't a very long one. The green is out once again, and they're back racing. So Charlie Glotzbach is in the lead now in car number six. And there's Buddy Baker moving in to the number two spot right behind Charlie Glotzbach. Look at him duel coming down this straightaway. Baker right up alongside of him. Boy, how close can you get, Fred? They are running close. This Charlie Glotchback has really turned into a charger, and he is running for the lead. Well, he's, dri he's driving a charger today. There are two of them side by side. And Glotchback squeezing off Baker as they go into the turn. This has been the best racing of the day between any uh, two particular cars, but we've had some, some great duels all afternoon. Look at how close they are. Baker tries to go to the inside down the home straightaway. Now, can he get through? That's the question. And Glotzbach is jammed right into the wall, and Baker has taken the lead. Oh, and I bet you Charlie Glotzbach is hot about that. Uh, I think he is a little uh, perturbed about that, Bill. Look at that. He comes right up on the tail of Buddy Baker. Moving right up and actually bumping him. And that's the kind of racing that makes this the great sport it is. We'll have more of it in just a moment. Fans here at the Darlington Raceway really eating up this duel between Buddy Baker and Charlie Glotzbach. Buddy slammed Charlie into the retaining wall, and then Charlie was so angered by it, he came right up and actually bumped the rear bumper of Buddy Baker, and that's the way they've been going at it ever since. These two cars running one and two right now, and here's the third place car, David Pearson just hanging back, watching the two chargers to <laughs> evidently trying to destroy each other. Richard Petty running in the number four spot. Full center, Leroy Yarbrough is back three laps, and Bobby Allison way back about eight laps from the lead. And now David Pearson starts to put on the heat to go by Glotzbach. 
And immediately there's a sign down in the pit for Pearson Think. Freddie, I think you've seen that as a driver before. Yes, that's a sign Ralph Moody first gave me in 1961 when I was running with two laps to go against Curtis Turner. Uh, he gave me that same board, and it's been with the Holman Moody team ever since. Apparently, they don't want him to put too much heat on Baker, but there he goes by Baker. David Pearson goes by Baker, and his pit crew says, wow, what are you doing? And so the leader right now is David Pearson, and here comes Charlie Glotzbach limping into the pits. It looks like he's all through for the afternoon, but he did some good jousting in there with Buddy Baker. So the leader right now is David Pearson. And uh, we'll try to get a word with Charlie Glotzbach, who put on such a great show with Buddy Baker. Well, let's get away from the racing just for a moment to talk to Charlie Glotzbach. Charlie, it was a great race while it lasted. What happened? Well, the engine started overheating, and so uh, rather than blow it up, I just parked it. What happened here along the side? Well, me and uh, Baker kind of got tangled up uh, going in number one corner and uh, raked the wall a little bit. You were right, absolutely right on his tail. It didn't look like there were more than three inches separating it. Yeah, I, I could run with him okay, but uh, it started overheating uh, right about that time, so I just started limping and uh, thought maybe it would cool off, but uh, it didn't do it, so I had to, just had to bring her in. It was a great job. So the way they stand right now, it's Pearson, Baker, and Petty in that order. And the new record at the halfway mark of the race, 137.647. We'll be back with what promises to be an exciting finish in the Rebel 400 very soon. Right now, let's return to New York City and Bud Pump. Thanks, Bud. The story back here at the Rebel 400 is that the leader is David Pearson, who is driving a car with the smallest engine, at least of the 68 cars running here today, 396 cubic inches. And he has taken the lead by one full lap over Richard Petty, who is now coming out of the pit row. The car in front there was uh, Buddy Baker. Buddy's had his problems. He's three laps back. Due to the fact that he's bent a lot of metal on that car, hitting the guardrail and a few of the other cars this afternoon. So he's running three laps back. And now here's Pearson coming into the pits. He needs gasoline. And a spin. Bobby Allison, number 29, spins. The caution flag goes out. So the caution light is out, and Freddie here is the pit crew of David Pearson sending him back on. They don't want him to stop. He was pitting under the green. Yes, Bill, and the minute uh, he came down the pit road, Hutchison noticed that the yellow was out, so they wanted to send him out until the field was slowed down and then bring him back in. So he's coming back in now, and the caution flag is out. And it looks like it may be that's all for Bobby Allison, who fun out the second time today. We'll be back with more of this exciting Rebel 400 in just a moment. The green flag is out again and they're back racing and the word from Johnny Bruner, the chief steward, is that uh, David Pearson was held at the edge of the pit exit until Richard Petty had gone by. That was because Pearson did not complete a full stop when he came in on that first pit stop. So it could be a little bit costly to him, Fred Lorenzen. Uh, it sure could, but he's just jumped back by Petty, and that should put him in the lead. It does put him in the lead. They were on the same lap, as you'll recall. Before that incident, Petty was one lap behind. But now, Pearson has moved back into the lead just a few feet ahead of Richard Petty. So it looks like we're going to have quite a wind-up to the race because uh, the next car, Darrell Derringer, is one full lap behind the two leaders. So Pearson and Petty are coming down right in front of us now, and that's Buddy Baker. Buddy is three laps back, although he likes to get up there and duel with the leaders. Pearson driving a new Ford Torino that sports a 396 cubic inch engine and is about 200 pounds lighter than any of the other cars. Here's Darrell Derringer, who's currently running in third place, but as I mentioned, he is one full lap behind. And it looks like it's all for Cale Yarborough. Look at that car. And apparently the engine blew because the caution light is out and the safety car is on the track. So the blown engine of Cale Yarborough puts him out for the afternoon, but it was a valiant effort by this young man from Timmonsville, South Carolina. 
Here comes Richard Petty in during the caution flag. Fred, is that any uh, real problem? They've got those 10-gallon tanks just sloshing gasoline all over the place. No, they just want to make sure it's really full because this could possibly be the last stop. Right, and Richard Petty goes out, and it looks like Pearson, they've got the hood up, and they're putting oil in it. I don't know whether that's significant or not, Fred, but they put oil in the car. It's just a precaution, Bill. Uh, keep it over full, and all it'll do is blow it out if it's too full. I'll tell you one thing, it cost him some extra seconds in there because Petty is back out there ahead of him. And here's a look at some of the tire wear of this afternoon, Fred. Boy, Whew. good thing for those innerliners, right? Without question, Bill, the biggest single safety factor in racing. Now, the two leaders, Richard Petty and David Pearson, and that's Buddy Baker up there right with him. But as mentioned, he is three laps behind, or he is now only two laps behind. He has unlapped himself for one lap. Look how close Richard Petty comes to that wall. Well, he's one of the most skillful drivers in the country today, and he won this uh, race a year ago. Before the race got underway today, we had an opportunity to talk to Richard. He started back in the sixth row in the number 11 position, and this is what he had to say prior to the race. Richard, you're back here in the sixth row at the start of this race today, and at Darlington, maybe that's not such a good spot to be because it's kind of tough to pass. Well, it's pretty tough to pass here, but if we can get the car running pretty good and uh, it handles good enough, then it's not too bad. But uh, really, starting back this far, even when you got a real fast car, it takes a pretty good while to pass anybody here because we just got one groove, and it makes it pretty close. You only have one groove, but today at least you have two carburetors. Yeah, we've got two carburetors, but I don't believe they're helping a whole lot right now. And uh, I think they're helping everybody but us, but maybe we'll get them worked out and they'll be all right. Best of luck to you, Richard. Thank you. Well, the carburetors may not have been right before the race, but they certainly seem to be right right now. Petty in the lead, but here comes Pearson right behind him. David pulls alongside. And it looks like Pearson, he does get him. David Pearson going into the lead. So with 50 laps to go, it promises to be quite a finish. We'll be back with it in just a moment. Well, we've had some dark clouds close in over the Darlington Raceway, and the yellow caution flag is out. It's just a light sprinkle of rain right now, but the cars are now coming into the pits. And Fred, I don't know how much of a problem that uh, light sprinkle would be. Quite a bit, Bill. Uh, these tires are such a hard compound that on a passenger car, you could never drive in the street with them. Just like a passenger car tire could probably ride around this track right now. So. When it even starts to sprinkle a little bit, the race is absolutely brought under caution. So at this point, under the caution, uh, you saw Richard Petty come on in. David Pearson is in the lead right now, and Daryl Derringer is currently running in third place, but here's Petty in again. He's pointing to the right front, so apparently he's having some handling problems with the car. They're going to they're gonna put another uh, right foot on there, Fred. They just changed it moments ago. Yes, he's got a problem somewhere uh, in the tires, he guesses. It must be thumping or shaking or doing something wrong. And we also noticed that he has lost his rear window completely. That's one of the mishaps of the afternoon. So Richard Petty has had to make a costly second pit stop here, and that moves Darrell Derringer into second place behind David Pearson. And apparently the rain shower is over because the green flag is now out. And they'll be back racing again. And this seems to be the tire in question. It just uh, wasn't performing properly, and it cost Richard Petty uh, another pit stop. So Derringer has now moved into second place behind David Pearson. And it means that Petty has moved back to third. Buddy Baker is one lap back of him in fourth place, and then Leroy Yarbrough. Well, that's the way they stand right now as the sun even begins to come out, and it doesn't look like we're going to have any more rain. And there's a pit sign for Pearson taking it easy. So apparently, Fred, they don't want to take any chances at this point. They sure don't, Phil. With just two laps to go, they've slowed him down because he's way out front. Uh oh Derringer brushed the retaining wall. Darrell Derringer, running in second place, just did touch the retaining wall. Wow, a close call, but he has it under control. And look how close Petty comes to him. Yes, the groove has moved way up. Uh, it does during the day, Bill. It starts down low, and as the day goes on, it just moves up high because the track keeps getting slack. And by the end of the day, it's right up against the fence. Well, that's where it is right now. And there is somebody else up against the fence. 
And it's Dr. Don Tarr, a surgeon from Miami, who races for the fun of it. And now the white flag has been given to David Pearson. When he comes around this time, it'll be the checkered flag for him. So here he comes with less than half a lap to go, coming down the home straightaway. And the checkered flag for David Pearson. First big win for him on the super speedways in seven years, and the fifth win this year. And a mighty welcome victory it is, too, because it brings him $13,900 for the first place finish. And it proves one thing with that small engine here this afternoon and that lighter weight, it really paid off. Now all the other cars being given the checkered flag, and here comes David. David Pearson, what a great job, Dave. Can you hear me? About again. You got that lead right on the first lap today. It turned out to be prophetic. Yeah, uh, well, he was. we were running pretty close together the first lap, and I said I could go ahead and get it. So I thought I'd go ahead and get in front then. David, did you have any uh, qualms at the end of the race? We thought you were smoking a little bit. No, uh, they just told me to slow up because I was a couple laps ahead, so I just went ahead. Well, you can hear that crowd in the background. It's really roaring for you. Thank you. That's the fifth rim this year for David Pearson. Well, as David goes down in front of the grandstand, a terrific roar goes up. And, of course, he's a very happy guy right now. What a race, huh, Fred? Oh, it sure was, Bill. I think the big thing here today was the lighter weight cars. The Chrysler ran the, the 404 engines, Ford, the only 396 was David, and I think the lightweight car showed. The heavier cars all had tire problems, so I think coming back for the 500, everybody will be running the light cars. Yeah, for this particular track. I think so, due to the uh, short straightaways and the big turns. Well, it was an exciting afternoon, Fred, and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Well, that's just about the story here from the Darlington Raceway, but let's take a look now at the official order of finish. In first place, David Pearson in a 68 Ford Torino at an average speed of uh, 132.699 miles per hour, a new track record. Daryl Derringer in a 68 Plymouth was second. Richard Petty in a 68 Plymouth was third. Buddy Baker in a 68 Dodge Charger was fourth. Leroy Yarbrough, the pole sitter, in a 68 Ford was fifth. James Hilton in a 67 Dodge was sixth. And the current NASCAR point leader, Bobby Isaac, was in seventh place. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arlen. World Pocket Billiards Championship produced by Jim Spence and directed by Marvin Schlenker. Rebel 400 produced by Dick Kirchner. Associate directors Joe Assetti and Larry Camp. Technical director in New York, John Broderick. Rebel 400 produced in association with Triangle Race Film Team. Remember, next week on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Rugby League Cup Final in color from London. Now, this is Bill Fleming along with Fred Lorenzen saying so long from Darlington, South Carolina. Today's program was pre-recorded.